I am not a data point. To be bought and sold. I am not a threat. Why are my baby pictures under surveillance? My identity is mine. You don't own it. I'm a citizen who lives in the world. And on the web. So I'm currently the executive chairwoman of the Mozilla Foundation. I've been involved with Mozilla since the beginning, which was way back in 1998. I became the general manager in sort of 1999, and have had that role for many years. I was originally the first CEO, and then transitioned to being chair of the board. Before Mozilla, I worked at Netscape. So I was working on the web and web browsers even before Mozilla, I think starting in 1994. So uh, the first commercial web browser was Netscape Navigator, and I was involved in the shipping of the first version of that and browsers ever since. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I say I'm from the time before time, <laughs> you know, from before uh, the internet or before search, for example. So back in the history when it's hard to find things. The dangers. Well, there's a few. So some of them are generally commented on and known. I think the, the internet was a, you know, a set of ideas, a set of openness that, that came out of an academic setting and was built in that setting. And so we have open, what we call open standards, uh, which is rare. You know, in many industries, the, the standards you need to interoperate are private and you have to pay for them and you have to buy them and you have to be accepted to be able to participate. So the internet was built on these things, which is an unusual idea you know, for a business. And so one risk is that as the internet has moved into the mainstream of life, we convert it into a more standard kind of network. We convert it into a network that is controlled by a few large organizations for what makes sense to those organizations. So that's one, increasing centralization and control by a few. Uh, another, another risk is that we, we recreate a few closed stacks of technology where in order to compete, you have to compete against all aspects of it. So for example, with our efforts to make Firefox OS, you know, we need to compete at the hardware, the software level, the applications level, the data level, the distribution level. That, in the long run, will stifle real competition and it will stifle choice for consumers and it will stifle the ability for new businesses to really enter. And so that's a transition point that we're working on. At, at Mozilla, we're working on it pr precisely because we think, it, we think it's a threat from the net. Another threat is that we regulate to protect the status quo. So the network, or the internet, or the web, you know, causes massive changes, disruptions sometimes. And so those organizations and industries that are being disrupted obviously have a response. And sometimes that response is competitive, but often that response is to want to protect the status quo. That makes sense. Those industries are protecting jobs, they're protecting economic generation. And so it's, it's very logical and easy for those industries to go to regulatory bodies and explain why we should regulate to protect that status quo. A couple changes. First, particularly in Europe, uh, uh, increasing voices for protection of data according to European standards, uh, which translates into a movement to require information to be stored on machines in Europe, or, you know, a desire to keep information out of the U.S. at all. You know, I understand that, but I think in the long run that's going to be hard to do really effectively. So, so that's one. Uh, among technology companies in the U.S., at least the ones I'm familiar with in the Valley, you know, I, I would say a sense of outrage. I, I think outrage is, is the right word at the degree to which 
for us, you know, our own government is engaged in a set of activities uh, which were surprising and uh, certainly go beyond the scope of anything you know, that, that we expected. And so you see a range of organizations or companies now trying to build increased protection into their products. Uh, you know, Mozilla doesn't show up as much. We don't have as much data, right? So, so we're not transmitting or storing as much data. Uh, despite that, we've been extremely active in the public policy discussions and the leadership discussions about what is acceptable and what's not. The other thing that I've noticed uh, outside the United States, uh, of course, is U.S. policy makes a distinction between surveillance of U.S. citizens and surveillance of other citizens. So, of course, once you get outside the United States, that's a significant issue as well. Uh, although I, I do wonder how many governments make that distinction. Um, and then also you hear the fear that it's not just the U.S. government or it won't be just the U.S. government. So I think the technology companies, many of us, not all, for sure, but, but many of us are in the forefront of trying to um, both explain to the, our government the drawbacks of the current policy and also to build in additional protections as well. Two things. One is the vision of the network, or in, uh, network life, online life. What is it like? Um, is it the scary big brother, everyone controls me, I have no say. Like, I, I want to live in a world where I still matter because I'm me, <laughs> you know? Uh, not because I'm spending more money than you or because some government thinks I'm important, but because I'm a human being. I want to live in that world, and I haven't given up on it yet, and Mozilla is a phenomenal opportunity and to, to build that. And I think the second, second set is people. Like that team that built Mozilla and built Firefox was pretty exceptional. And today we have an exceptional team. Uh, and the, the local volunteer communities are really exceptional. And I think there's five or six of our community here, if you wanted to meet them. But you know, as I travel around, especially young people and students uh, who have their whole future in front of them, the number and type of people who are drawn to Mozilla to contribute to a whole that we share is very gratifying. You know, the world's got a lot of scary, difficult, sort of depressing things going on, but the set of people who are drawn to Mozilla and trying to do something better is, you know, it's encouraging. <laughs> it makes me feel better about what, how the you know, world might develop. The internet is our largest shared resource. Let's take care of it. There's never been a better time. Brought to you by Firefox.